How would you get here? Mom dropped me off at the library. I'm oh. supposed to be studying right now, but I had to come see you first. Okay, what's what's wrong? Well, I don't know if Christina told you, but I've been having these episodes. I get angry for no reason and break things. At first, I thought it was because I was bipolar. Oh, like my dad? Right. Yeah. Since it runs in families, I figured if Uncle Sonny had it, there was a chance I could, too. Hmm. But then I met Sean. He said it sounds more like post-traumatic stress. Who, who's Sean? Oh, he used to be a Marine in Afghanistan. Okay, well, where did you, um, where did you meet this Sean? Volunteering at the hospital? Mm -mm. I was on Baker Street when there was a car accident. It was really weird. As soon as I heard the tires start to squeal, I felt like I was right back on the bus. <sighs> that must have been pretty scary. I was afraid to move, afraid to even breathe. Thankfully, Sean came over to help, and he stayed with me until I calmed down. Okay, well, he seems like a nice guy. After I told my mom what happened, she got me an appointment to see Christina's therapist. Mom thought it would be a good idea to talk to someone about what happened. <sighs> Today was my first session. I was a little nervous, but talking about what we went through was surprisingly helpful. Oh, well, that's, that's, that's great. Yeah. But when I left, all I could think about was you. How you could benefit from counseling, too. Um, I, I know that the bus crash really freaked you out, uh, Molly, but it wasn't, it wasn't as bad for me. It was probably because I'm older, and um, I've been through a lot worse stuff in my life. Like going to Pentonville, right? Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm glad, you know, talking to somebody is helping you out, but I, I don't need to shrink, I'm fine. Really? Because to me, you've been exhibiting all the signs of post-traumatic stress. You lose your temper for no reason. You get into fights at school. If you just talk to someone about what happened, I guarantee you wouldn't have so many outbursts. Talking to someone about what happened gives you an outlet for all that anger. Look, I realize not everyone is comfortable opening up to a stranger. That's why I came by. I'm here to make you feel better. So please, Michael, please tell me what happened to you in prison. But Molly, it, it was nice of you to stop by, and I appreciate you trying to help, really, but, but you just need to focus on your own recovery right now. Well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Counseling made me feel so much better, and I think it can make you feel better, too. It took a lot of courage for you to open up and talk about what happened and how afraid you were after the bus crash. How hopeless we all felt, really. But like, even if you think you, you're feeling better, there's still a long way to go. So that's why you have to keep seeing your therapist. I know. And I just wish you had someone to help you, too. I did. And even though I, I don't see her anymore, she, she helped me out a lot. You're talking about Abby, aren't you? I can see how she'd be really easy to talk to. Remember that day at Kelly's? Abby was so nice to me. I liked her right away. Yeah. Christina did. Well, that's because Christina wants you to be with one of her friends. Well, you don't? Not if you don't. I mean, Christina's friends are nice, but... They get hung up on the dumbest things, like who's taking who to the dance, which class is going to win the spirit stick at pep rally. It's so high school, and you're so not. Maybe it's because of everything you've had to go through. It made you more grown up than other kids your age. But that's why Abby was so perfect for you. She was mature. That's what everyone was so weirded out about it. They thought she was too old for me. Michael, don't let the conventions of small-minded pedants stifle the feeling you and Abby have for each other. If you love Abby, you should be with her. You sure you don't want me to drop you off at home? No. Abby, hi. hi. It's nice to see you again. You too. Actually, the timing couldn't have been better. Michael and I were just talking about you. Molly. Really? What were you guys saying? 
Oh, just how perfect I think you and Michael are for each other and what a mistake it was for you to break up with him. Trust me, you will never find a better guy than Michael. Michael is an incredible guy, and he deserves to be with someone his own age who is just as sweet and wonderful. Well, absolutely, but Michael might not have so much in common with girls his own age. Well, I'm wise enough to know that I'm too old for Michael. Well, according to who? Some of the greatest love stories of all time are between an older woman and a younger man. Oh, this was this is one of your books, Molly. Oh, I know. I'm talking about real people, not characters. Take Elizabeth Barrett Browning, for example. She was six years older than Robert Browning and knew her father wouldn't approve, but that didn't stop them from having the most romantic courtship ever. I mean, think about it. If Elizabeth had let her age or her parents' opinion get in the way, she never would have fallen in love or written sonnets from the Portuguese, which inspired countless poets who came after her. All I'm saying is, if you and Michael break up, you'd be cheating yourselves, and maybe even the world, out of something truly amazing. No pressure. <laughs> no, seriously. Love doesn't come along every day. You shouldn't waste it. That's enough, Molly. Your study group's waiting. Well, I can get to the library. Why don't you stay here and catch up with Abby? I, I have to get to work. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And you're making it late. I'm sorry. It's okay. Uh, let's go.